morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us another day in which we can consider his holy word and learn to do the things that please him. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the word of God. And I have a message for those of you who are my sisters in Jesus Christ about how it is a godly woman handles her emotions. And this message is from the Word of God. And while I, I tell you with all earnestness that my opinion agrees with this message, the message that I'm giving you is from the Word of God, and it is not my opinion. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. So a woman's emotions are something that can be very beneficial to the people that she serves. So if a woman is a married woman, she can be very sensitive to her husband's needs and his the things that he expresses to her in confidence. She is also designed by God to be a sensitive caregiver to her children or to her elderly parents or her elderly in-laws. She is made to be sensitive, and that is what makes her also the weaker vessel, more easily deceived. So my sister, the my sisters, pardon me, the first thing I would say about this is just because we feel something really strongly doesn't mean we should take that thing and run with it, either in our actions or our words. Strong emotions do not mean that what we have in our heart is right. And it is written in the scripture that the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. The way we would overcome that as Christians is we would understand that what we put in our heart has a lot to do with what comes forth from our heart. So when we're putting the word of God in our heart at the beginning of every day, it's very likely that what we say and do will be better than what it would have been if we didn't do that. It's kind of like a computer program. Garbage in, garbage out. So if you program a computer with bad data, it will spew forth bad data. And in like manner, what we put in our heart makes a big difference in how, how it is that we speak and we act. In particular today, though, I want to talk about overcoming the flesh as it is um, pertaining to the emotions. And this is something that is written in the Word of God and I believe will be greatly edifying to those of us who are women who have strong feelings. Having strong feelings does not determine that something is true. And verily I say unto you, we would want to be subject to the Word of God in the things that we meditate upon and also, therefore, the things that we say and do. Now, this begins with abiding in the Word of God in the morning before we speak or do anything, but it also means aligning our lives with the Word of God, doing what it says. Jesus Christ said to his disciples, he said, My mother and my brethren are these that hear the Word of God and do it. So let's begin today in Galatians chapter 5, to understand the war that exists for all of us who are God's people of the flesh against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And I want to begin today in verse 14 of Galatians chapter 5. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word today. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When we are putting the word of God in our hearts, doing what it says, 
it's a lot more likely that we're going to do unto other people the way we would want to be treated ourselves. And when we don't do those things, it means that we've given into our flesh and done something that might in the moment feel really important or powerful, but later on it causes harm. And we realize that and repent of it. And you know, my sisters, I am aware of this pitfall for Christian women particularly. And that is because God has given us strong emotions. And sometimes we think we really have the, the best understanding of a situation and know exactly what should happen. And we open our mouths and we regret it later. And so this message is particularly for those of you who are my sisters about how to walk after the Spirit. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now this in no way means that people who think that they're being led by the Spirit, don't have to obey God, it, that that is something that we as God's people would take heed to. Because we understand if we love Jesus Christ, we will obey him. He said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. So there are many who think that doing whatever they happen to think or feel is right is walking after the Spirit. And this is certainly not true. Walking after the Spirit means that we do what the Word of God says, because the sword of the Spirit, it is written, is the Word of God. Hallelujah. So let's read on. Now the works of the flesh, so, so these are the things that war against the Spirit. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelous, revelings, and such like. And such like. So things like this. As of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now I'm going to point out some of these things here. Now, some of these things are things that we do. So, adultery is an action. However, some of the things mentioned here are things that we express, and we can express them in our words. So, particularly, what is variance? That is someone who's always disagreeable, always saying, well, I don't really know, and maybe it's this way, maybe it's that way. So, it's a kind of contention. Variance. Emulations, that's when somebody pretends to be something they're not by pretending to be like someone else that they admire. Emulations. And it can be other things, but particularly I'm talking about you who are my sisters today. Wrath. Okay, wrath is when you feel really angry about something and you impose your anger upon others. And it can be done verbally or it can be done physically. So when we're angry, of course, we would take heed to not sin when we're angry and get our heart in alignment with the Word of God before we act or speak. But wrath might be telling someone that we think that this or that person is, is um, hopeless and, and, and should be you know, reviled or something like that. It can be our words or it can be things that we do. Maybe we're angry at our child and we lash out at them physically or verbally in anger. That's wrath. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Strife. Okay, strife is the arguing. And we know in the scripture that it is written that only by pride cometh contention. And we know that a gracious woman retaineth honor. So we don't get involved in strife. Seditions. That's when people gather together to tear somebody else down who's um, serving God seditions. Heresies. Well, that's obvious. That's false doctrines. Envyings. So envy is when we see that somebody else has something that we want and it makes us angry that we don't have it. And so we try to steal that thing and also keep that person from having it. 
it is usually the motive for uh, the kind of activity when people are tearing other people down, envying. Murders. Now, murders can mean killing someone, taking their life. But Jesus Christ said that to hate one's brother uh, is to murder one's brother. So if we harbor hatred in our heart, it's very likely that we're going to speak that hatred and we can end up killing someone's reputation or breaking their spirit when they have no idea why we're saying what we say. So we don't want to speak and do things that are based on Hatred, hatred, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So those are the things of the flesh that war against the Spirit. Now let's read about the Spirit of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So we can see that the fruit of the Spirit is manifest in the kind of heart condition that is emanating from someone who loves the Lord. So when we love God, we love our brother. We are meek, we are joyful, we have peace, we're not tossed about with our emotions. And so, as godly women, we would understand that we would strive to have a meek and a quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Well, what is long-suffering? That means that we put up with other people's faults and we don't go into tantrums about things that we perceive to be difficult. We don't start arguing with people. We realize that we have faults like other people have faults and we seek to see things and people the way God sees things and people. So God is long-suffering with us and merciful with us. And we all know that if we're being honest. And so we would want to extend the same thing to others. Long-suffering. Long-suffering with our husband if he gets irritated when he's overwhelmed. Doesn't mean we have to start an argument. Long-suffering with our children because they're learning and growing. And sometimes we can watch them make a mistake without coming down on them like a ton of bricks, either verbally or physically. Long-suffering. Long-suffering with the people around us also and the various things they might need to overcome, knowing that God, for Christ's sake, hath also forgiven us. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Now, lusts are things like your flesh wants to pig out and have a big feast and get all sleepy and then lay around and watch, you know, soap operas. That's what the flesh wants to do. The flesh has lusts. The flesh wants the things that please the flesh. But what are the affections? Affections are things that we either desire or that affect us. So we're affected, maybe if we're around somebody who's irritable or somebody who's cruel. We're affected by it when we see sin in other people. So we don't want to speak and act from affections. We don't want to speak and act from things that we want. Maybe we see somebody else has something that we don't have, and we don't want to tear that person down or try to steal what they have, either through emulation or through um, some other covert means of undermining someone who has been given a gift that we haven't been given. We would understand that the flesh operates first in the heart, 
and the heart is what causes us to do things and say things that we then are defiled by. Jesus Christ said, that which defileth a man is that which proceedeth out of the heart. So when we speak things that come forth from our heart before we brought our heart into alignment with the word of God, not only do they cause harm to other people, but they cause harm to us. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and being one another. As women, we have strong feelings. Maybe we're around a family member who's a female who is constantly competing with us and constantly criticizing our clothing or the way that we're raising our children. We wouldn't want to respond to that woman from our flesh. Rather, we would remember that we would want to bring our fleshly reactions, how we are affected by that into subjection to the word of God. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25. Starting in verse 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. You see, if we can't control our spirit, then we're not going to be able to control our mouth or our actions. And we're going to be zealously affected, but not well. So that means we're going to start to feel very zealous about saying and doing things that cause harm. And the reason why that is, is that we are like a city that is broken down and without walls because we are not ruled by the word of God. The way to have rule over one's spirit is to examine one's heart and one's words and actions according to the word of God. Let's turn now to Romans. And I want to begin in Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. And here Paul is writing about how people have become so corrupted that they've fallen into all kinds of abominable activities. And I want to read the manner of spirit that he describes here so we can all understand filthiness of the spirit. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So we understand that malignity, so having bad intentions, an evil heart towards someone, causes us to enjoy it when other people kind of join in with that. And so we want to refrain from speaking things when we're angry or feeling hateful, when we're feeling envious, when we're feeling as if we've been wronged. We want to hold our tongue in those situations and understand that if we speak from those things, we are enticing others to join in with us with things that in the Bible are referred to as slanders, evil speaking, backbiting, and so on. 
And as women, we want to be particularly careful about this because when we get hurt feelings, we think, oh, we must be right. And maybe we were really hurt. And maybe those feelings are religious, um, pardon me, those feelings are legitimate. But that doesn't mean we should speak them or try to get other people to agree with us or jump on our, our um, desire to exact vengeance upon someone. We would understand as God's people that that's not the way the Lord Jesus Christ acts and it's not the way his people should act and certainly not we who are godly women. Now let's read in chapter 2. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. So all those things are worthy of death. And we would be very careful, my sisters, to bring our heart into alignment with the word of God, lest we destroy ourselves. Verse 3, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same? You see, it's so easy to see fault in someone else and think, oh, they did this to me, and we don't stop to think that we're doing the very same thing back to them if we allow ourselves to be affected by what they do. Now, as Christians, we understand that we should crucify the affections and lusts. So if somebody's done something, and it's affecting us, in order to have walls around our city, we must be obedient to the Spirit. And again, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? So it is God's will, of course, that all men would come to repentance. And if someone has harmed us, we would want them to come to repentance. And lashing out in anger because our heart has been hurt, our feelings have been hurt not only gets in the way of that, but it causes us to be guilty of the very thing, usually, in one form or the other, of the thing that we found so offensive. So we hold our tongue in such situations until we seek God and understand how God sees the situation, and we understand that God is the righteous judge. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile for There is no respect of persons with God. We will all be judged according to the word of God. Not how justified we felt in tearing down another person. Not how self-righteous we felt about pointing out an evil in another. Rather, we will be judged whether or not we trusted God to be the one who would exact judgment. And we would obey the commandments of Jesus Christ as we serve him in this world. 
because we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We're not ambassadors for ourselves. And if we're feeling wounded or affected or insulted, or we see sin in another and we start to get up on our high horse, we would climb down off that high horse and get on our knees and go before the living God and ask him to lead us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's go to Luke chapter 6, and let's begin in verse 44. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do gather, do not gather figs. For of thorns men do not gather figs nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For the, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house, and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, and the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded, upon a rock. It was as a city on a hill, a walled city, safe, founded upon the rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, and against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So, my sisters, our affections, our emotions, the things that bother us, the things that annoy us, the things that make us angry, the things that cause us to be upset, the things that we lust after that we don't have, the things that cause us to want to argue and contend, the things that cause us to want to rise up in anger and pride need to be brought into subjection to that rock, which is Christ. And when he was reviled, he reviled not again. Those of us who love Jesus Christ keep his commandments and we do what he says, even when it isn't easy. We crucify our flesh daily and understand that if we want to inherit the kingdom, we have to act as ambassadors for the king and drop our self-righteousness and our indignation and our wrath and our pride. We leave that before the throne when we get on our knees and tell the Lord about what upsets us. And in that way, and in that way, we will live in safety, in the secret place of the Most High God, under the mighty protection of his holy wing. We will understand that God is our defender, not our words, not our actions. And while our words and our actions matter, those words and actions should be expressed as it is written in Galatians 5. So let's read this again now to understand how we walk after the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. I pray this message has been edifying for you, my sisters. Let us take heed to ourselves lest we fall, because we serve a mighty God and we fight a very wily and subtle enemy who desires us to fall off the rock and start doing things that will keep us from the holy kingdom. Let us remember this. 
I remain here for you. Feel free to write to me if you like or to comment in the comment section underneath the video. And may the word of God go forth today and uplift and bless and edify many. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.